this set of meditations that you do from beginning to end helps you to from taking refuge, developing the altruistic mind, the four immeasurables, the altruistic mind and the four immeasurable types of thought combined with dissolution of the world as you know it and its projections and the reappearance of that world into a Buddha field surrounded by mandalas and all beings surrounding it to be dakas and dakinis and embodiments of enlightenment. And the meditation stages of dissolving that universe, dissolving samsara into emptiness and arising from emptiness. And then combining that with dissolving the winds, the channels and drops of your body to purify your delusions and illusions. And then transform your body like that of your meditational deity into that of a, of a vehicle to benefit others. Up to the point of reciting mantras of felicitation, reciting prayers of benediction and felicitation, and reciting aspirational prayers to benefit others, up to dedication. That refuge to that dedication is what we call a sadhana. So a sadhana is literally translated as this. Self-growth. Why sadhana in Tibetan, sadhana is Sanskrit. In Tibetan it's called dake. Da means self. Ke means to grow or develop or to transform. So the word can be grow, develop, transform, transmute. Transform, transmute, grow from what? From a delusional state of self-centered mind to a altruistic mind that thinks of others. So the purpose of doing a sadhana is to transmute or transform like elixir from mercury to gold, from that of a delusional mind to that of a wisdom mind. That's the purpose of a sadhana. Each deity has a sadhana. Each deity has a mantra. Each deity has a special meditation and each deity has a special path. Each deity and each mantra and each path is perfect for becoming enlightened, but their approach is different. Each deity sadhana is appropriate for enlightenment and will bring you to enlightenment. But the difference is that the approach is different and that approach depends on one's own individualistic inclinations. Meaning, if one is more lust-based, desire-based, hatred-based, ignorant-based, anger-based, then according to one's basis and one's immediate heaviest delusion, then one's yidam will be the one that counters the heaviest delusion, simultaneously purifying the other delusions in one go. Example, Lord Yamataka would be anger and deep ignorance and use that method. Lord Hiruka will be lust and attachment. Guya Samaja will be a combination of all three. So Vajugini being the synthesis of Hiruka's practice, a shorter version, will be a counter to desire, lust, attachment, and using that method to become enlightened, and hence her body red and her visage fierce and trampling on demons of selfishness and ignorance and hatred. The black figure under Vajugini represents hatred and ignorance. The red figure under her represents desire. So when tramples on those three, she tramples on the very causes of samsara, which is the three animals in the center of samsara's wheel, the pig, the rooster, and the snake. So Vajugini is stepping on those three, which is the center of samsara, representing that's the cause of samsara, ignorance, hatred, and desire. So she tramples on those three. When you practice Vajugini together with mantra, with meditation, and holding your vows, it propels you to her state. What's that state? The state free of those three delusions. So a sadhana is something that we do every single day. It's a practice manual. 
from A to Z to becoming enlightened. It's a set form of prayers, which starts with refuge, which starts with next is aspirational prayers, the four immeasurables, thoughts, and then dissolution of the environment as we know, and development or the projection of the environment as it should be. Dissolution of the environment as it is, projection or creation of a Buddha environment, a Buddha being and Buddha sound. Everything Buddha. And then using that combined with making offerings supreme and mundane to the deity, such as offerings we place in front of the Yidam as a method to collect merit, conjoined with meditations within our mind to control the winds, the drops, and the channels. The winds is the wind, pass is the wind that passes through its chi. The drops is the bindu or the is the fundamental drop that started us. The single drop from our mother, red, the single drop from our father to control that which remains in our body. And the channels, one, two, chakras, which are joint energy points for our winds to travel. So doing this sadhana, you are holding your vows that you get through initiation to stop doing further negative things. It's like someone who smokes no more ciggy butts. You cut it off. That's what the vows do. Cold turkey. So a lot of people can't do cold turkey. So before you take tantric vows, that's why your guru doesn't let you go do it. He does. He trains you up. So people who are fierce, the guru is fierce. The people who are gentle, gentle. Whatever the guru needs to train you up, this way or this way, the guru will train you up so you can take the vows. Because you can't give the vows cold turkey to people. They'll break it. Defeats the purpose. It's like giving a little baby a, sh a, a, a crystal um, glass. When the baby grows up, give it, can, no problem. When the baby is small, you give a crystal glass, break what? Drop. So similarly, the guru trains you up. If you submit yourself to the training, you will come out excellent. If you fight it, then maybe you have a better method. If you fight it, you don't have a better method, you look at yourself. Are you happy? Are you depressed? How's your body? How's your life? Your friends? Your attitude? Your mind? How are you? You have to look at yourself. Okay, then, then by this meditation combined with making offerings, holding your vows and a secret power of mantra, when you combine it, such in the Vajraginis case, your attainments will be very fast, very efficacious. So a sadhana is a self-transformation text, self-transformation manual and guide to enlightenment. And each deity has their specific sadhana to do. It can be short or it can be long. The prayers that I have composed that are in DMT, those are not sadhanas, those are prayers. Prayers are aspiration, aspirations in words that we offer to the deities, hoping that what we prayed for will manifest. So aspirational prayers are something we aspire to. So for new people who go into DMT, KMT, they just buy a Zambala and they don't know what to do. I give them aspirational prayers with a mantra so that they can Make prayers of Zambala to have that actualized. And by reciting the mantra, purify their negative karma so that they can achieve something small from it. Mm -hmm.